Good morning, everyone. So, happy new week. We are starting a week off. We're going to start off strong. So, very focused today. I have an open mic we're going to host right here in the studio later tonight. Uh, so far, I got two confirmations. I got two other invites out. So, I'm going to see if I can get the four in here. Um, I'll share a little bit of that, but then I also do... Uh, so, we do five minutes... Then we each get about 20 minutes a piece. So you come up on, on, on my makeshift stage here. You do five minutes of material, roughly five minutes of material. And then you get about 10 to 15 minutes of feedback. So that's where the people I invite are in my circle. And they're really good about giving feedback, tagging up jokes. We're really good at listening and trying to offer feedback. It's not negative feedback. It's all positive uh, here's what you can do to, to make this joke better. Here's what you can do uh, to make it quicker. Here's a tag for you. A tag is like an extra joke on top of a punchline, right? So uh, that's what we do here on Mondays whenever we can. Um, I try to host them every week, but sometimes, you know, life gets in the way. We have shows. Sometimes there's shows on Monday nights. Uh, my buddy David Hardy has his improv show the second Monday of every month. So we go and do that the second Monday of every month. Um, that'll be in two weeks. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to be doing that tonight. Also, ugh, dude, so you, you guys see this over here? Like this is our, my son and I, we paint miniatures, Warhammer 40 K miniatures. Um, you know, we got all our stuff. There's two tables here. You can't see it. This is a, a, a desk that goes up and down. But then this right here is like a little metal table. That's what I'm supposed to be using for the Legos. And I still haven't built it because all the shit's on it. I find other stuff to do. But I need to focus. So, the goal today. Sorry, I'm like smacking like sound in the mic or whatever. Uh, I want to clear that table off. I want to clear that table off. Uh, I need to at least move it out. I don't want to just like plop it right in the middle because we're going to be doing a mic here. But I need to at least get it out, start getting it prepped, and lay down this black shit on it. So I have this. It's like a black foam core. Foam core. See, it's like it's got foam in the core. That's what we call it in the film industry. We use this uh, for lighting. Uh, we have white foam core, so use it as a bounce. And you got black if you're using it for negative space. But I figured this would be good. I'm going to use this. It's going to, I think I'm going to hot glue it down on that table. And this is going to be basically a parking lot for the Lego scene. I'm going to build a Lego scene on top of it because I have to shoot stop animation. I, I might clean up the garage a little bit behind camera. There's, uh, I have all my Christmas stuff out still. Uh, so we unpacked or packed up all the Christmas stuff. But it needs to get pushed up into the corner all nice and neat. Right now it's just kind of spread out here. So that might be a good place. Maybe I'll move it over here. So it's behind everybody. So later on, I don't have to worry about it being in the way. But that's the plan for today um, to knock that out. Uh, and then also, uh, I shot some more AI videos. So like, you know, with, with comedy, I'm still tracking my carnivore diet stuff. But I'm also trying to shoot some fun sketch stuff. These AI videos, I'm having a good time. I got a long list of prompts for me to shoot my, you know, questions. I'm asking AI. Uh, I shot two more uh, two nights ago. Uh, so I want to get those edited and get at least one of them dropped online. I might drop one today and then one tomorrow. I might drop them both today. I don't know. I feel like spreading them out is better. and uh, But I'm probably going to be working on that. Um, I would Honestly, I would like to get a little exercise in. I don't know if I'm going to get around to it. But if I can get a little bit of exercise, like a little three-mile jog, that would be wonderful. Um, and then at the same time, got to get the kids. Got to do the parenting stuff. That's always a part of it. I know. I look how much energy I have. <laughs> I got so much energy. Now, you know what's funny is today, I went to Starbucks. Again, some of you guys may have seen my video. I spent five, $600 a month on Starbucks. Uh, I feel like at this point, I'm just paying my barista's college fund. Um, I know all of them over there. We got Kim, Charisma. We got Eric. We got Gibson. Uh, we got Rhett, Heather, uh, Jaden, Darius. Like, I know all these people. I've been going there for years. And I love them. And they, they treat me well. And, you know, even my daughter's like, you need to just make coffee at home. And then my son's like, you need a shot caller every time you say Starbucks. Like, all right, I get it. I get it. I'm addicted. 
Uh, but here's the thing. This morning, they, they know I'm a comedian. Some of them have come out to my comedy shows. It's great and everything. But this morning, this guy, Eric, uh, him and I were chatting up. And uh, we had a conversation yesterday about, I asked him, I said, like, like, who's your favorite comedians? And he was talking about Mark Maron. And he talked about Pete Holmes. He was talking about some of these comedians. And then this morning, he's like, oh, bro. Like, he just started off the conversation. He just goes, oh, Rory Scovel, like that's another one, like his 2018 special, and then he has some other specials. He has one on YouTube and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I've heard of him. I don't really know who he is, but I heard of him. Got in my car, and even though I got stuff to do, I looked up Rory Scovel on YouTube, pulled up his 2021 special, which actually is not so much a special. It's like an hour and 15 minutes. It's not so much a special as it's more documenting one week of shows that Rory did at this theater in I think it was Atlanta, Georgia. I think it's Atlanta, Georgia. It's a it's a it looked like an old church that was run down by homeless people and they keep interviewing the guy who runs the place. It's called the Relapse Theater or whatever. And this dude was illegally illegally like took uh, ownership of this place, started cleaning it out and started hosting shows. I mean, it's pretty interesting, but then obviously Rory Scovel, he's doing his comedy throughout, but it isn't like, it isn't linear. It isn't like, Hey, here's the start of the show for one hour of comedy. It jumps back and forth in and out. And what it is, is him doing five nights of impromptu improv comedy shows. So the dude has a lot of material, but he's like, I just want to get up. Cause he, he came from the world of improv, doing improv shows, but then he really got into stand-up and just shifted to stand-up. So he's, Rory's talking about, like, dude, like, like I missed that. So I'm just going to go up on stage, and I'm just going to improv. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to the audience and just improv. And it just inspired me. I'm like, I love that. Coming at it from, like, a journalistic standpoint. Let me go up there and ask him questions. He gets into this whole sex thing about, you know, like, rating, like, you know, how sex is like one to 10, like how, how devious is it or how, how uh, kinky is it? And one lady is like ropes and ball gags. And he's like, well, how do you rate that? And she's like, out of, out of 10. And she's like, no, nah, like a three, like as kinky. And he's just like, and he's losing his mind. But then he talks about like, he talks about after the show, they're, they're talking to Rory and he's just like, <clears throat> man, I should have like asked like, well, how do you choose your rope? Like, what kind of rope do you choose and how do you decide what kind of ball gag you want to use? So it was just really fascinating. And <clears throat> so I want to thank Eric over at Starbucks, dude. You 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 rock, dude. Like, I really appreciate that. Um, kind of putting me in contact with, with who this person is. Because I started watching it. I was just like, oh my God, this is like just a whole nother level of inspiration. And as comics, like... You're constantly trying to reinvent yourself. You're constantly writing jokes. You're constantly writing material. You're you're searching for material. You're constantly reflecting on your own life and like, what should I talk about? You know, because that's the vulnerable side. Like, do I want to talk about my demons? Do I want to talk about the bad shit I've done? Do I want to talk about all the good stuff I've done? What can I talk about where people are going to relate? Uh, what can I bring up that might uh, push the boundary of what I shouldn't be talking about? Um, so... I love it, and uh, thank you, Eric, my barista at Starbucks, uh, for uh, telling me about uh, Rory Scovel. Because I'm now gonna go down that rabbit hole. Um, when you find a new comic, you all of a sudden you start searching and looking up their stuff, and 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 if they're funny, you just can't get enough, and you'll just watch it and watch it and watch it. And uh, this guy, like, just seems down to earth, like someone I would want to hang out with, and love his humor. Absolutely love his humor. So. Um, so thanks for that. Um, but yeah, I, I am going to, you know, without further ado, get to it. All right, no microphone. Um, I got to charge them. So <clears throat> I got a little run in today, did four and a half miles. That was nice. It was a nice little side thing. Got my exercise in. Um, set up to Mike tonight. Two people already bailed. Um, I'm here in car, no rush. Sorry, Texas popped up. It's Rico. Um, yeah, uh, two of my, my close friends, uh, they had to bail. Um, so instead of being five, there's now three of us. It is what it is. It was too last minute for me to get someone else. But uh, shit, we move forward. Still got to write jokes. Still got to work on jokes. So 
by myself, two people, five people, 20 people, it doesn't matter. Um, so I have uh, my buddy Rico and my friend uh, Buffy coming in. And uh, so I don't know, instead of five minutes, maybe we'll do eight minutes each or 10 minutes each. I don't know. I'm just going to be ranting again about some random shit. Um, just basically mining, mining for gold, mining for jokes. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, uh, try to finish this night out strong. I'm starting to get tired. I've been up all day. I've been up since uh, 620 this morning. And the exercise kind of knocked me out more than I was expecting. Just went and got a coffee. Um, that second run of the day man it's killing me dude but it was cool like when i was there i was talking to the one barista he's like dude you're a comic he's like dude i've known you for a while i didn't know you were a comic i'm like yeah i don't like I, and i realized like that's my fault like i should be telling everybody i'm a comedian uh part of that is like your personal brand promoting yourself i haven't been doing it um so i need to do it that's what i need to do um, I mean, I've had those, some of those briefs to show up to shows. I don't know if it's like mentally, I'm thinking they're going to, uh, tell their friends, tell each other like, Hey, the guy's a comic, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, one of them tonight, like, you're a comic dude. I'm going to come out to some of your shows, man. All right, cool. That's dope. I didn't, I, I don't know. That's my bad. I guess I should, I should know better. I should be telling everybody I'm a comic and promoting and getting people to come out to my shows i mean how else are you going to grow your fan base if people don't know and so lesson learned there uh but yeah i'm gonna get up in uh here in a minute and see what we can come up with what's up hey can you write is this on yeah it is on okay are you just right there? do you guys notice that my new microphone yeah i did fix my old i did fix my uh my other microphone, which oh, did stopped. It. yeah, I did. I soldered it, did micro surgery, and it and it worked. I was impressed. Um, but then my friend, because it was my birthday, my friend got me this mic. I, I think he likes this. Oh, there it is. Sure, brand. Yeah. He got me this too. Like he got me this one here. Oh wow! Oh, that's yeah, nice. he's a he's a big uh, sound musician person. Um, anyways. Yeah. Uh, what was I going to talk about? So I wrote down my prompts behind me. That's never smart. Write down your prompts behind you. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Exhibit A. Uh, kid tell his father. Uh, no, so the other day I was uh, I was at the grocery store. And uh, I like to... Did, I like to interrupt people's conversations. When I hear people talking, I like to jump in and answer questions if someone asks their partner a question, right? I'm that kind of guy who likes to jump in, just for fun. Uh, actually, tonight, dude, like Yvonne and I went to Starbucks and and uh, I saw one of the baristas who, you know, I talk to all the time. I started walking outside with this big, like, jar-looking thing and I just jumped out of my truck. I was like, cookie jar! And she just turned, she goes, what the fuck? <laughs> It wasn't a cookie jar. It was a water bottle. Like, who carries like a 64 ounce water bottle? <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I was at the grocery store and this kid, uh, I was just in passing. He, he's, he's next to his dad and he was like, Dad, you're lucky I was born. What would you do without me? And I just wanted to jump in and just say, listen, kid, like, I got this, you know, tell his dad, like, I got this. And just tell him, like, look, your brother... Your dad would be like traveling through Europe, you know, living a promiscuous lifestyle, uh, leading and paving the way for all mankind. Um, but I don't know. I feel like I gotta, I gotta come up with like a really good speech to give this kid yeah, because, because I'm like, dude, the kid was like maybe ten years old. Like that's my son's <laughs> age. My son's ten. I love my boy, but like. Don't ask a stupid question like that. What would you do without me? Bro, I would do a lot without you. You know what I mean? I would do a lot without you, Oliver. I love you, but there's a whole nother life out there. Um, getting getting sprayed by a skunk or eating, having to eat 35 raw eggs. 35 raw eggs or getting sprayed by a skunk or... Let's do this. Let's talk about getting sprayed by a skunk while you're in the process of eating 35 rides. <laughs> 
35 raw eggs. That's, dude, that's with the yolk. Oh, God, dude, that's, uh, you know, I grew up as a kid, and I would watch these movies where you'd see, like, you know, Sylvester Stallone, like, fucking Rocky drinking raw eggs. And then when I got to the cool age of, like, 16 in the 90s, uh, it was like, oh, salmonella. And I was just, so I feel like I missed a huge opportunity to consume raw eggs, you know, raw egg form. There's actually a lot of people in Los Angeles who own chickens. And um, I think it's odd. Here's the thing. I think it's super odd. How many, why do so many people in Los Angeles, one of the biggest cities in the world, having chickens? Like, I think it's very odd. I can understand if we go two hours outside the city, people have horses and cows and chickens. Why the fuck do people have, like, chicken coops in their backyard and on top of their fucking roofs of their apartment buildings. I think that's fucking weird. There should be a city ordinance. No more chickens. They're smelly, too. Have you ever gotten behind a chicken truck on the freeway? That is horrible. That is disgusting. And then here's the thing. It always happens, like, at the rut. Like, you're driving and you're flying. You're cutting through traffic and going around people. And you come around a big truck. And then you see the fucking feathers flying out of the back of this fucking truck and you're like oh god and it hits your fucking air vent and you're like jesus and you you hit the recirculate you know so it's but it's too late that happened to me too speaking of skunks uh there was three skunks going up and down my fucking street and my buddies my two buddies were in my truck and we come flying around the corner and i spotted them right here by my house a few houses down coming around this corner and I'll say, fuck, get him! And I hit the gas, and I swerve to take out this family of skunks. I know, don't hate me. I, here's the thing, skunks are adorable. Get rid of the stink gland. They are adorable creatures. Fuck, they were fucking up my house, though. I live by the, the fucking mountains. And then every night I smelled this shit, and it was pissing me off so much that I was willing to murder three of them with my truck. So I swerved to take out these three skunks. And my buddy goes, no, 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 wait. And he reaches up to hit the recirculate vent on the truck because my AC was on. And right as he went to push it, you just smelt it fucking come in the vent. <laughs> fucking sprayed right inside. And my, <laughs> my truck smelled like skunks for like four weeks. And all three skunks lived. They just, I missed, I missed them. I missed them. So I, uh, they won. Yeah, I uh, I fucked myself on that one, hardcore. Um, but yeah, I. Um, you got one more minute. I got one more minute, but uh, you know, honestly, I don't. Here's the thing: consistency is everything when it comes to food. Raw eggs. I I've, I've cooked a lot of eggs. I love cooking eggs. I love eggs a lot. I had six eggs today, by the way. Um, but raw eggs, it's gooey as shit. I mean, I might as well just like drink my. I, I really feel, I mean, that's why it's the same consistency. I think it's just, it's, you know, it's not really for me. Um, but of course, I mean, have you ever tried to cook your, is it, is it, is it, is it, does it, uh, is it like scrambled eggs? Is it chunky? I don't know. We might have to put this to a test. Uh, but here's the thing, like, <laughs> uh, but but raw eggs like we missed that opportunity to uh, to consume it. You know what I mean? Like I feel like no one no one does that anymore. Um, I don't know. All right, I feel I blew my load on that one. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. Open mic over. It's not a photo. It's a video for. It's going oh. on YouTube. You're going to YouTube, Buffy. Best Wednesday night ever. Monday. What the fuck? Dude, you know Comedy community. Oh, you probably will watch it on Wednesday. No, I know, but I'm saying if John and those guys see, because John was calling me today, I'm like busy, kind of busy Tuesday night. They don't watch. You guys don't watch my YouTube channel. If you do, oh well, sorry. You guys know. John knows I do this on Mondays. I know. He chose to do it at the same yeah, time. Yeah. If you see this, I John. That up. If you see this, John, fuck you. I brought that John, up. I was just in the Why area. Why would you do that? <laughs> Monday, Monday. And you want us there. Oh, uh, well, initially they said Thursday. I, I just I so know. I, I just so happen to be in Glendale. That. You probably live in West Hollywood. It just so he just so happens to be fifteen minutes away. <laughs> yeah, forty-five <laughs> minutes is around the corner now. It is. It is. All right. Bye. Bye.